648. Welcome back to the Valley today. Taking a live look this morning at Minneapolis, one of the many cities in Minnesota and around the country that saw huge turnouts for Super Tuesday 2016. Minnesota, the only state that handed a win last night to Marco Rubio, his first win of the campaign. Bernie Sanders won on the Democratic side in Minnesota. Hi again and good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. 11 minutes before 7 o'clock, and we're starting our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. There were huge turnouts in Moorhead from both sides of the aisle for Super Tuesday caucuses. Yeah, at the GOP caucus site in Moorhead, people said that they were hoping their fellow Minnesotans would pick a candidate that would unify the party. Clay County Republican Chairman tells us how the next Republican presidential nominee could do that. Whoever is our nominee to represent people and get rid of the labels and uh, stand for issues that are important to Americans and stick to, stick to what you stand for um, and be consistent. Now at the DFL caucus in Moorhead, that was at the MSU Moorhead Student Union, and it was just about as packed as it could get with people waiting to take part. Lines there out the door and down hallways in three directions. Many people said they were amazed and encouraged by the amount of people who showed up. A lot of people waited two hours to vote, saying Super Tuesday is the second most important day to be heard next to the actual election. I don't want to show up in November and go to the voting booth and pick the lesser of two evils. And that's typically what happens every year. I think this is a really watershed election. Everybody knows what's at stake here. We have like we have extremes and we have moderates on both sides of the spectrum and everybody needs to have a say in what's going on. Now one man we talked with said it's the biggest turnout by far that he's seen in the 12 years he's been coming to the Minnesota caucuses. Now we'll have a closer look at all of the election numbers from Super Tuesday coming up here on the Valley today. But first, time for weather and traffic on the one, starting with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Taking a look outside, you can see things are beginning to lighten up out there this morning before that 7 o'clock hour. Cloud cover, though, for much of us today, and that's going to be hanging around all day long. You can see these clouds all in our uh, Fargo hourly forecast here, even into the 7 o'clock hour tonight. So a cloudy day, a gray day, but a mild one. We're starting off in the 20s, and we're going to see those temperatures rise into the mid-30s for your highs. In addition to that, the wind should be on the light side, too. So we shouldn't have an issue, or at least much of an issue, with wind chills for us, especially into the afternoon as our temperatures are rising today. So looking good for the most part. We have had a little light snow this morning in the Northern Valley and now over into northwest Minnesota. Also some snow off to the west associated with our next system that will be impacting us late tonight and into the overnight hours, bringing us a slight chance for some snow or a light chance, I should say, depending on where you are. Looking in the southern or northern valley along Highway 2, that's where we may be seeing some flurries, but this is really falling apart, that area of scattered light snow. 24 degrees currently in Fargo and in Grand Forks. It's much colder toward the north and east where we're at two below in Roseau. 19 degrees in Wadena, Detroit Lakes 21, and Valley City's at 23 degrees right now. Wind speeds are light, less than 10 miles per hour, and as we mentioned, they should stay that way. So for tonight, we'll see some snow showers move in, mainly in the west and in the southern valley. Best chances for snow. In addition to that, we could be getting a coating to about an inch of snow by the time this winds down early Thursday. So waking up tomorrow morning, we may be starting off with a fresh coating of snow in a couple of locations as those temperatures dip down into the teens. But for tomorrow, we'll see temperatures back into the 30s and we hang on to those 30s kind of holding steady through the rest of the work week. Friday 39 degrees your high. There's a chance for some wintry mix going on. Behind that a big surge of warmth. Saturday 43 degrees. Sunday back into the 50s. Looks like a great weekend ahead and even into next week we hang on to those 50s. Tuesday there's a chance for some thunderstorms. So a little bit of everything coming up here in the extended planner. Let's check in now with Al for an update on traffic. Steady to moderate traffic on uh, westbound Interstate 94 this morning. As I indicated earlier, not quite as heavy as you normally see this time of day. Travel speeds are up, though. I'll tell you that, 65 is pretty much the norm out here. No two ways about that. Northbound I-29 continues quite busy this morning. Overall, our travel conditions are really quite good. The road's in great shape. Drive carefully today, Al Amit, Valley Today Traffic. 
Seven minutes now before seven. Turnout broke records on Super Tuesday as Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton carved out dominant positions in their party nominating races on Super Tuesday, marching ever closer to a general election clash. Trump, the Republican frontrunner, piled up seven wins across the country, demonstrating broad appeal for his anti-establishment movement. He won Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. He has 315 delegates. 1,237 are needed to win the GOP nomination. As for the rest of the Republicans, Ted Cruz won last night in his home state of Texas and also in Oklahoma and Alaska. He now has 216 delegates. Marco Rubio, as we mentioned earlier, picked up just one win on Super Tuesday. That was in the Minnesota caucuses. Rubio has 105 delegates. Well, Hillary Clinton with a big night at the Democratic caucuses around the country. She won seven states and showed her strength with minorities in the South. Clinton took home Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Massachusetts, Virginia, Tennessee, and Texas. She has 1,033 delegates. 2,383 are needed to win the nomination. Bernie Sanders says he's not giving up. He won in his home state of Vermont and also in Minnesota, Oklahoma, and Colorado. Sanders has 387 delegates. Now here's the vote breakdown from the Minnesota caucuses. Republican winner Marco Rubio had 36% of the GOP vote to Ted Cruz's 29% and Donald Trump's 21%. Democrat Bernie Sanders won big in Minnesota. He picked up 63% of the vote yesterday. Hillary Clinton had 36%. Turning to other news headlines this morning, as former substitute teacher in the Dilworth Glendon Felton Public School District is now accused of having sex with high school boys. Tara Nichols could face up to 15 years in prison if convicted. A concerned mother alerted police and the school district to the situation. Court documents say Nichols picked the male student up, drove to a rural part of Clay County, and had sex two days in a row. The district says Nichols resigned once the investigation started. Her first court appearance is April 12th. A teacher at Grand Forks Central High School is accused of having a sexual relationship with a female student. Police got a report on February 22nd of a teacher engaged in a sexual relationship with the student. The Grand Forks County State's Attorney's Office is now reviewing the charge of corruption or solicitation of a minor. The teacher's name has not been released because formal charges have not been filed. 6.56 now and it's a day to grab your favorite book, find a quiet place and do a little reading. It's Read Across America Day. It's also Dr. Seuss's birthday. That's why I have Horton Here's a Who. But as I was going through all of the books from Dr. Seuss, it's hard to pick a favorite. The Valley Today is Christy Larson joins us live from the Fargo Library in downtown Fargo with more on encouraging all ages to read. And it sounds like you've been doing a little reading yourself this morning. I have, guys. I've been doing some reading. I read a couple of uh, books, Cat in the Hat, uh, Green Eggs and Ham, and Amber's pretty impressed. I read through quite a few in this morning, right? <laughs> yes, certainly. <laughs> but again, the importance of reading and the importance of is today is just to make sure that parents are giving their kids that opportunity to expand their vocabulary, their language, their knowledge. Certainly, it's, it's a special way to highlight those skills and, and, and highlight the ways that we can share that with our children. And you guys do that every day here with story time, with programs. I mean, you have so many different things and hundreds and thousands of books to choose from. Yes, we do. We do. Um, we've got stuff for everybody. Like I said before, we've got stuff for babies through senior citizens. Um, and we don't just have books either. We also have things like books on CD. Um, we have uh, DVDs. We have music CDs. We have video games. We have e-books. So if you have a, a, a Kindle or a Nook or you read stuff on, on you know, e-books or e-audiobooks, we have those as well for both adults, children, and teens. And so when you're telling people, you know, why to come to the library, how do you kind of sell them on it? I mean, it kind of sells itself, but what do you kind of remind them that you guys have here? Well, especially if you have young children, I mean, nobody can buy every book that's out there. And certainly it's nice to have your own library at home to, to go back to those old favorites that you like. But this is a way that you can really experience things. You can take them home, try them out, and, and have them. It's also a great way, I think, of, of teaching kids about sharing and about community, because that's really what the library is about. It's about sharing and being a part of your community and engaging with your community. So it's, it's a great way to also share those ideas as well. And you forgot one of my favorite things. It's free. It's free. How could I forget? It's free. It's open to the public. Anyone can get a library card. Anyone can come to programs and participate. 
And I know you said, too, it helps build those memories. I know I have many nights in my head where we sat down. You got a different turn of which kid picked out the book to read. I even just the other weekend, Kyle and Lisa, was at home and reading some of my favorites again. And I think uh, Ruby the copycat, Miss Nelson is missing. And uh, there was one called McDougal's Castle where there were some investigating mice. I don't know why it stuck in my head. I just loved that there was a ghost in a castle, I guess. <laughs> There's lots of favorites. And I said, actually, we've been, this is checked out from the West Fargo Library. Mm -hmm. We had to get a couple extra Dr. Seuss books, but the Llama Llama books are very <laughs> popular. We actually read a Llama Llama Mad at Mama mm -hmm. last night. But all of the Llama Llama books are very good. I'll, I'll make you a list that you can buy for, say, yeah, for Baby Bosch because... Okay. There's some favorites that are, you know, <laughs> classics that all kids need to have. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you, Christy. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, average women do this about 150 times a year, average men about 10 times. The answer, check their horoscope. You can take part in our question of the morning every Monday through Friday morning at our Valley News Live Facebook page. Steve Poitras, when he worked here, he used to read all of our horoscopes in the morning <laughs> for us. But so he was the uh, you know average man who would do it more uh, more he, than 10 yes, times. Yes, that was Steve. Steve. Uh, let's still okay. Steve memory, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve used to do weather here. And uh, we do have some snow on the way, especially later on tonight. Uh, a light dusting of snow, maybe up to about an inch. Looking mild through the forecast. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everyone.